Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson on the MRI of the knee. In this lesson, we will look at the bony structures of the joint, important ligaments and tendons, and anatomy on different planes of MRI imaging. Let's get started. The knee joint is classified as a synovial hinge joint with some capacity for rotation, allowing primarily flexion and extension, and limited internal external rotation when flexed. It is the largest joint in the body formed by articulations between the femur, tibia, and patella. Additional soft tissue structures associated with the joint include the menisci, which are pads of cartilage for shock absorption and joint stability. Important ligaments of the knee joint include the anterior cruciate, posterior cruciate, medial collateral, and lateral collateral. The anterior cruciate, or ACL, runs diagonally within the knee and prevents excessive forward movement of the tibia relative to the femur. The posterior cruciate, or PCL, crosses behind the ACL and prevents excessive backward movement of the tibia relative to the femur. The medial collateral, or MCL, runs along the medial or inner side of the knee and protects from forces pushing the knee inward. The lateral collateral, or LCL, runs along the lateral or outer side of the knee and protects from forces that push the knee outward. Other important structures are the quadriceps tendon, attaching the quadriceps muscle to the patella, and the patellar ligament, which attaches the patella to the tibial tuberosity. Now, let's take a look at the anatomy on some MRI images, starting with the sagittal plane. Starting from a medial position, the vastus medialis muscle is seen on the anterior portion of the upper leg. On the lower leg, we can see the gastrocnemius muscle. The medial condyle of the femur is demonstrated. As the slices move laterally, the anterior and posterior horn of the medial meniscus is well demonstrated. These are sometimes described as dark triangles. Superior to the meniscus is the medial condyle and inferior is the medial tibial plateau. Arriving toward midline, the posterior cruciate ligament is demonstrated. It usually looks like a curved structure. The patella is demonstrated with articular cartilage located on the posterior aspect to reduce friction in the joint. Remember, the patella has a base, located superiorly, and an apex, located inferiorly. The quadriceps tendon is located superior to the patella, and the patellar ligament is inferior and attaches to the tibial tuberosity. Remember, tendons attach muscles to bones, and ligaments attach bones to bones. Posteriorly, the gastrocnemius muscle is seen wrapping from behind the tibia and up behind the knee joint and the symbimembranous muscle located behind the femur. At midline, the anterior cruciate ligament is seen connecting the femur and the tibia. This structure typically looks like a diagonal straight line. One way to remember this is, if you were to draw a capital A, a straight line would first be drawn, somewhat shaped like the ACL. On the posterior side, the popliteal artery is demonstrated. Infrapatellar fat and the prefemoral fat body are located near the patella. As the slices continue laterally, the lateral condyle emerges. Again, the meniscus is demonstrated here. This time, it is the anterior and posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. On this final slice, the head of the fibula is seen, confirming this is the lateral side of the knee. Let's move on to the coronal plane of imaging. Starting anteriorly, the round-shaped patella emerges. Remember, the patella is classified as a sesamoid bone and is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. The quadriceps tendon is located superiorly. The patellar ligament is located inferiorly. On the sides of the patella, you can see the medial patellar retinaculum and the lateral patellar retinaculum. Moving posteriorly, the femur emerges with the vastus medialis muscle. Arriving about halfway through the knee joint, the medial condyle and lateral condyles of the femur and the tibial plateau are visible. Muscles demonstrated include the vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and tibialis anterior. The medial and lateral menisci are seen here, again in a somewhat triangular shape. On the lateral side, the iliotibial band is seen starting at the tibia and extending upward. On the medial side, the medial collateral ligament and a portion of the lateral collateral ligament is demonstrated. Here, the condyles continue to be demonstrated. This particular slice shows the medial and lateral intercondylar eminences are easily identified. The anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament are seen in the intercondylar fossa. 
On the final slice, the fibula is demonstrated and the dark meniscus providing cushioning for the joint are seen. The biceps femoris muscle is seen on the medial side and the sartorius muscle is on the lateral side of the posterior femur. Finally, let's take a look at a few axial images. First, let's address a simple technique to determine the medial and lateral side of the image. Typically, there is going to be more fat located on the medial side of the knee joint. Moving inferiorly, the patella is located anteriorly. Important muscles seen include the vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, sartorius, biceps femoris, and semimembranous. Popliteal vessels are located posterior to the femur. Here, the medial condyle, lateral condyle, and intercondylar fossa can be seen, along with the medial retinaculum. Anteriorly, the patellar ligament is demonstrated as a dark structure. Remember, ligaments and tendons appear dark on images. The dark appearance centrally on this image indicates a slice cutting through the menisci. The medial head and lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle is located posteriorly. Continuing inferiorly, the proximal tibia is demonstrated, along with the patellar ligament again seen anteriorly. On this last slice, the tibia and fibula are visible, with the patellar ligament attaching to the tibial tuberosity. This has been an overview of knee anatomy on an MRI scan. Thanks for watching.